Now, what's interesting about this is it actually allows you to bypass the brokerage account and own stock not in street name, but in your name. And that, in my opinion, as a really long-term investor is something worthy of consideration. If you're investing in stock for, for 30 years, maybe you want it in your name. Maybe that's important to you. Hey everyone, this is Ian. I'm back with another video about dividend growth investing. So all of you out there watching the video today, I bet you're quite excited about investing in dividend growth stocks, building a dividend income, passive income cash flow that could cover your living expenses. In fact, that's what gets me personally excited about dividend growth investing. Well, today I wanna to discuss a fundamental topic. How can you go out and purchase stock? How can you buy stock? How can you become a dividend growth investor by actually acquiring shares in publicly traded companies that have a long track record of increasing dividends? Well, there are three ways you can do that that I wanna to discuss today. First and foremost, stock brokerage account. So over the years, there have been so many discount brokers that have emerged on the internet, having great websites, great ability for average people to buy stocks with low commission rates. Brokerage route is a good route to go, especially if you can find a broker that's been in business a long time, that you believe will continue to be in business a long time. Think about it, as a dividend growth investor, you're not going to see a lot of dividend income in your first year, your, your second year, third year, fifth year, probably even 10th year. But once you start getting 15, 20 years, even 30 years out, that snowball effect is going to be huge. So you wanna choose a financial institution that you trust, that you think will be around. So if it's a brand new broker, versus an older one that's been around, has that track record, has that client base, something to consider when choosing brokerages for dividend growth investing. Another point worthy of consideration for the broker route is the fact that when you buy stock in a brokerage account, it is typically owned in what's called street name. Street name means that it's actually the broker's name on your stock. The broker goes out, gets the stock for you, holds it in their name, but in your account, obviously it's in your name, it's in your account, but it's part of what's called street name. So the broker is the one actually that has purchased the stock on your behalf. Now there's nothing wrong with that, it's just something worth pointing out. Now um, certainly uh, brokerage accounts, when you're researching them, make sure to choose one that has a huge amount of insurance, one that covers many times the assets that you have in your account. And the, you know something in street name, even if they go out of business, they go bankrupt, at least you have that insurance policy knowing that your assets are insured and that you will get them back if something, something horrible happens. So that's the brokerage route. Here's another route. How many of you out there have heard of what's called dividend reinvestment programs or direct stock purchase plans? These are plans that are typically run by the company that's issuing the stock along with what's called a transfer agent. So the second option is called transfer agent. Basically, what's a transfer agent? If I'm a big company like McDonald's, for example, and just a disclosure, I own stock in McDonald's and I have for a while and I'll probably continue to own it for a while. If you're a big company like McDonald's, you hire what's called a transfer agent to manage your stock for employees, for investors, the logistics, the, the record keeping, all of that kind of stuff. You hire the transfer agent. So transfer agents typically partner with companies and offer what's called these dividend reinvestment programs or direct stock purchase plans. It allows the dividend growth investor to buy directly from a company. Now, what's interesting about this is it actually allows you to bypass the brokerage account and own stock not in street name, but in your name. And that, in my opinion, as a really long-term investor is something worthy of consideration. If you're investing in stock for, for 30 years, Maybe you want it in your name. Maybe that's important to you. Maybe it's not and you go to the brokerage account. There's pros and cons of all of them. So, so do, do, I'm not trying to, to say go one way or the other here, just trying to provide some of the facts that I have learned over the years being a dividend growth investor. So 
The other thing about a direct stock purchase plan is typically the fees are, have been historically very low. Now, why is that the case? These large companies, they want you, they want me to invest in their stock in a direct stock purchase plan or dividend reinvestment plan because it creates loyalty. It allows them to build a loyal shareholder base and it's, it's a way for the company just to reward those loyal shareholders who want to be in it a long time. If you're a trader, you're probably not opening a dividend reinvestment plan. But if you're a long-term holder, which is what the companies want, you probably are looking at vehicles like that. So certainly something that the companies will, um, will reward. So one thing though to keep in mind is fees have been escalating over time. As with anything in, in life, price is going up. And that's one of the reasons it's so important to be a dividend growth investor is to hedge against inflation. But price is going up. Some of the companies aren't covering the costs anymore. They're passing some of those costs along to shareholders. So when you buy stock, when you sell stock, when you reinvest dividends, when you make optional cash payments on a monthly or wh whatever basis you want, there may be fees attached to it. Not with all companies, but with some and with a growing percentage of companies. So if you're considering that route, make sure to be very cognizant of the fees because in some cases the fees may be higher than going with a discount brokerage. And that's it's obviously worthy of consideration because if you are investing in dividend stocks, you're starting small, you wanna grow, every single last dollar counts. Fees will eat up your returns over time and, and certainly if you can avoid that, that is quite important, something worthy of consideration. Something else to consider, disruptors. So disruptive technologies. In Silicon Valley these days, there are so many new companies all the time in this financial, they call it FinTech, financial technology arena, a lot of disruptors. And some of them out there are new concepts in, in the world of, of brokerages. And what they do is they offer you and me the ability to buy stock uh, with no commission. So example, this is Loyal3 company called Loyal3, they have a limited selection of stocks you can buy. You have some of the big blue chips on there that are popular with dividend growth investors, which is a nice thing, but uh, no commissions. So that's, that sounds really cool. One of the challenges with the model, or I wouldn't say challenge, but just something worthy of consideration is these companies are new. Are they gonna be there in 10 years, 20 years, 30 years? If they're not gonna be there in that amount of time, do they offer an easy way for you to transfer your stock out of your account into another account and make it easy on you without forcing you to sell or something like that, which is, which is, I would say, one of the worst things as a dividend growth investor is to ever be forced to sell stock. You certainly, sometimes you may choose to sell stock, but you don't want to be forced into that situation when you're looking at the advantages of compounding for, for 20 years out. If you're forced to sell, that could, that could certainly put a uh, curveball in, uh, in your strategy. So that being said, these disruptive technologies are awesome for a smaller investor, for someone just getting started, because you can start with as little as $25, there's no fees, uh, and, and you can have your money work for you. Now, one thing to keep in mind with the disruptive technologies is typically they batch orders and they buy once per day. So you can't just buy and sell at any time. It's a batched order, meaning they, they trade in that particular stock for all of their customers once per day, sometimes twice per day. Worthy of noting, the transfer agents we talked about earlier, and by the way, some examples of transfer agents, if you've never heard of them before, are ComputerShare, Wells Fargo Share Owner Services, Broadridge, and um, American Stock and Transfer Company. They also oftentimes do batch orders. So if you're, if you, especially for buying, for selling, they sometimes do it quicker, but if you're buying, they'll typically batch all their orders into one block. So if you need to pick the exact time of the day you're buying, maybe a transfer agent, maybe a disruptive technology isn't for you. That being said, if you're in this for the long term and you're investing dollar cost averaging over time, incrementally over time, maybe that's not so much of an issue to you. Obviously, that would be something on the brokerage side that's, that is an advantage of a brokerage is you can buy and sell anytime the market is open. So again, ppcian.com, really passionate about dividend growth investing and just want to share some of my knowledge today with all of you about taking that first step. If you're, you're, you want to get started, you don't know where to go, here are three ways that you can get started and you can buy stock today. Now, before you buy stock, just something overall to be aware of is um, do your research. Obviously, I'm providing some good insights here, but, but get out there, do your research, and um, have conviction behind, um, behind what you're doing. So 
Before we go, just a quick disclaimer, I'm not a licensed investment advisor. This is not investment advice. It is just for fun and entertainment. Please go ahead and consult your investment advisor before making any financial decisions. So once again, ppcen.com. I will see you in the next dividend growth investing video. Thank you.